Hey guys, I'm David Demuzio, and today I'm here with Dr. Patrick Mwamba. We're about to do a surgery for me. It's gonna be incredible, I'm super excited about it. But right now, I wanted to ask Dr. Mwamba what you think the three biggest myths are in hair transplantation. So number one, what is the biggest myth you see coming in from patients that's not true? Uh, the first big myth is like when patient feels like high density, high hair density will give them high and full coverage. That's the first big myth. High density equals full coverage is a myth. It's a myth. Can you explain that a little bit more? Yeah. When we talk about high density, it's hair density is a number. It's like I'm putting 70 hair per square centimeter and you have to make a difference. Am I putting 70 hair or 70 follicles? Okay. Because when we do hair transplant, usually the follicle can be one hair, two hair, three hair. So then you have to change because if you say my density, my hair density is the number of hair and that number uh, doesn't relate exactly to the coverage we're getting from the graft. Okay, so for instance, like 51 hair grafts versus um, let's say... 42 hair grafts. 42 hair graft will give a better coverage. Much better coverage. Yeah, because 40 by 2 will make 80 hair. And you see a lot of patients who are just talking about the number of grafts. Oh, graft. And it's just like, give me more grafts, more give grafts. Me more grafts. Okay. So, and they don't. And then, second thing, because there is a formula that will say the volume, the coverage, doesn't depend only on the number of the graft. Mm. It depends on the number of grafts. It means if I double, the number of grafts, I double the density. But there is one thing very important, is the caliber of your hair. Mm, if I important. double the caliber, I quadruple the volume. Mm, so the caliber is the each individual hair strand, strand and how thick it is, the diameter of each. The diameter of each yeah. hair. That is very important. That's why like, you will see somebody, like especially you will see on the Mediterranean people. Mediterranean people, yeah. They have like those Thick hair, you say, oh my God, it has a great, great density. You look at the density, 50, 60 follicle. Oh, yeah. but how come it looks so full? Yeah, yeah. Just because of the coarseness of the hair. There's definitely some channels on YouTube where I'm sure you know, um, especially that are over in those Mediterranean areas and they do the FUE surgery and there's the results just look insane. insane. You're like, yeah. how can that po be possible? And people don't realize how much it has to do with that kind of, that patient has like the thickest hair you can yes, imagine. Sir. Your yeah. hair is nothing like that patient's hair, yeah. you know? So that's the second thing like you have to count on. Of course, the density is important. The caliber is super, super important. Then you have the length also. The length, because okay. the length of the hair gives also some coverage. Because if you have long hair, it falls and it provides some shadow and some type of coverage. Then you have like a factor that is really intrinsic. It's what we call the contrast between the skin color, the hair color. That plays also a big role. So, And then at the end, of course angle because as we always say you're trying to create a shadow and if you put like your hair vertical the light will go through mm -hmm. but if you angle a little bit it block the light and it give a little bit more shadow it's like trees like when they they're a little bit more bent they will create a shadow and you have that impression of coverage not uh, seeing the the, the the bare skin. Mm, yeah. So you were saying that some of your patients have like dyed their hair and then it's suddenly they're like, oh my gosh, oh my like, God. yeah, now my hair looks so thick because I'm a white guy and now I have blonde hair instead of like the dark hair and light skin and light kind of skin, contrast. Yeah. And number two, what is the number two biggest myth you see patients coming in? The biggest, the second biggest myth is like, uh, I will talk a lot about black patient or Asian patient. You will hear like, oh, you know, if you have curly hair, you don't need that much density to provide coverage. <clears throat> and I'm talking about especially especially here because I like, I really like to build up hairline, uh, natural hairline. When it comes for hairline, it's a myth to say if I'm a black, I need low density to provide good coverage in the hairline. Mm -hmm. In the hairline, black, Asian, white, you need 
high density. Everyone to, needs high density. High airline. density to have a great hairline. All the same. Pretty much the same. All the before. same. Okay. Mm. And the fact uh, people say, but why? He has curly hair. He has coarse hair. Uh, why? And we've been, we've been talking about coarse hair provide more coverage. Yeah. But the fact, like, when you build a hairline, you need to build a hairline for that to look natural. You need to use soft hair, thin hair. Okay. Yeah. In black, in Asian, or in white. Mm. So you need to get those thin hair at high density to provide that natural coverage. Yeah. So yeah. now the challenge in black and in Asian, mm. it's where to find those thin hair. Oh, because naturally they have coarse hair, so you have to look for <laughs> thin hair to make it look natural. Okay. Otherwise, they have a hairline that doesn't look natural. Mm. So their advantage of having the super thick hair <laughs> suddenly becomes almost a disadvantage or like a little bit little bit more tricky on the hairline on itself. The hairline itself. Mm -hmm. yeah. And you got to find just as many graphs. Yeah. All right. Now, what is the number three big myth that people are missing out on? The number three big myth was if you want to do a mega session on a Norwood 6, 7, I will say 7 and we will keep them low. Norwood 5, Norwood 6, a lot of people say, oh, start with a strip surgery, FUT, then you can finish with a FUE. Mm. So it's always been like that because then you will have the most hair. And this is a myth. Okay. For me, if you have a Norwood 5, 6, start with a FUE, mm. then... Finish with the FUT. I found this very interesting because, yeah, that's always been my thought as well, is to start with FUT and then go to FUE. I mean, I can see sort of reasons for both, for sure. My one thought on that is, so the main reason you're saying start with FUE, and this totally makes sense, is that people generally want um, their hairline is like the most important and that's what they want to do first. They want to get the hairline to frame the face. Cause that's sort of the money, you know, yeah. money shot in the, in the, in the, the, uh, hair transplant. So with FUE, the advantage is that you can pick each individual hair. And so you can give a finer, more natural hairline from the start with FUE. Now, my thought was, the only way that I see that going wrong potentially, and it's, I feel like this is something that unfortunately not everyone goes to really good surgeons, is that if you go for like a mega session and they end up depleting your donor area in like this really good sort of region, you know, then I feel like that could be more of an issue for FUT if you went to go do a strip. If you weren't, if you weren't worked on by a surgeon that was really good at like homogeneously you know, extracting from the donor zone, then I could see that becoming tricky after that. But if you're, if you go to somebody who's like good at homogeneously extracting and has a really good transection rate and all that, then I, I yeah, I totally agree with you. What, yeah, what are your thoughts? Because my thought on that is exactly what you said. Like before, uh, I think at the beginning, they were pushing that envelope saying, oh, with FUT, you will get good graft first. Mm. But today, remember, with the hybrid ones, with mm. all the technology, the advancement in technology, today, having transected hair, it's really a bad surgeon. It's a bad surgeon, okay. It's a bad surgeon. Mm. So usually you can... But it still happens so much. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to, in the gym all the time, you know. That's one and... thing, like, maybe one day we have to tackle that subject okay. is the training of the physician because mm. it sucks. Okay. In, in our <laughs> industry... <laughs> We don't train properly physician. And that's why, like, you see so many donor harvesting in a wrong way. But if you have a good FUE, which means, like, you're taking the good graph. And that's why, like, I was saying, like, why FUE is good at the beginning. Mm. Because first, not only the hairline deserves, like, those thin hair, but guess what? The hairline, you know that you need soft hair. So you will mm. go in the nape hair. You cannot go there with the FUT. Yeah. You need big hair here so you can selectively cherry pick only three hair graft to build up this area mm. where this area here that you see that we call the, the central core is the area where if you dance back you can have necrosis mm. but that's also the area where you need the most volume to give you like you, you know what we were talking like in your case yeah, yeah, yeah. we wanna this area you wanna the best hair but with at low density. Mm, okay, yeah. So it's like you need 30 follicle per square centimeter or 40, but three and four hair graphs. So it gives you a higher volume without making 
the uh, the possibility of necrosis mm. because necrosis depend on the number, the number of, of number of grafts. Yeah, of graft. yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. So to get that, you have to cherry pick the trees and falls. Mm. But with the FUE, I can decide to just get three hair graft mm. and leave all the other. Yeah, 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 yeah. So you see, so you have that much flexibility to build up what I would say the frame of your house, mm. and then, of course, when you come later on, if you already build everything. Now you, you need what? You need only good hair. Yeah. And only strip can give you the maximum of good hair. Mm. Because the strip will take 100% of the good hair. Okay. Yeah. But if at the end you come with the FUE, you cannot take only the good hair. You have mm. to go take the, the less hair where you need the more volume. Yeah, that totally makes sense. Okay, um, <laughs> just in case anyone missed your accent, when, when Dr. Mamba gets excited, his accent comes out even more. Okay, so... Um, Quickly recapping on this, because I think this is fantastic, is the reason Dr. Mom was saying to start with FUE and then get FUT, FUE, you can cherry pick all the hair. So two big advantages to that is that you can start, you can get the lighter hair on the hairline, which is what we generally want is the lighter, softer hair. And then coming back afterwards, once you've framed the face, you've framed you know, the house, so to speak, then this area right here requires even even than the you know uh, crown requires so much hair and also you don't want necrosis which is where um you get the scabs and everything mm. falls out and it's just the scar you know it's like the, basically the worst possible thing that can happen to you on a hair transplant, hair transplant. and so you don't want a dense pack too much in this area right here, but you need tons of hair to actually make it look thick. And so the benefit of then doing FUT afterwards and after you've established the, all the hairline and everything is that you can get really the best hair because still getting the 100% maximum best hair from here is uh, is the one you know real benefit of FUT. So you can go back and then and then do that without the worry of necrosis. So yeah, that that's for me uh, one of uh, the things, and and uh, and I have a patient that I did. I think uh, he will present his case. Mm. We did like nine thousand graphs. We did three FUE, mm. and then at the end we did a big strip with all the strong hair to fill up everything. Wow, I bet that and, turned and, awesome. and and it, it turns from like a Norwood five to today a Norwood two. Wow, that's incredible. Thanks so much for watching, guys. We're gonna get back to my surgery, and we'll see you very soon.